You've been told for 40 years that cholesterol causes heart disease. LDL is a villain. ApoB is a bullet. Lower the number, save the artery. That's the script. But here's the part nobody told you. Cholesterol can't damage an artery unless one thing breaks first. Inside every healthy artery, there's a microscopic shield called the glycocalyx, a sugar protein gel layer that actually blocks cholesterol from ever touching the arterial wall. So if that shield stays intact, lipoprotein is harmless. It flows in, flows out, delivers fuel and leaves. No inflammation, no plaque, no disease. So here's the real question. If LDL needs a damaged wall to become dangerous, why does cardiology spend billions lowering LDL and almost nothing repairing the wall? Because fixing the glycocalyx doesn't require a lifetime prescription. It requires understanding what destroys it. Glucose spikes, cortisol, inflammation, endothelial stress. The things no drug company profits from. See, the whole system is built on managing the marker, not repairing the mechanism. Cholesterol is not the origin of heart disease, endothelial injury is. If you remove the lies and look at the actual biology, plaque doesn't start with high cholesterol. It starts with a damaged glycocalyx. The glycocalyx is the first line of defense, a 0.5 to one micron shield that repels ApoB particles with electrical charge and physical spacing. When it's intact, LDL physically cannot touch the arterial wall, not less likely, not reduce risk, literally impossible. Harvard Cleveland Clinic, Karolinska, the research is already published. Atherosclerosis begins after glycocalyx erosion, not after a cholesterol rise, not after a high fat meal, after the endothelial shield is stripped by oxidative stress, glucose spikes, and inflammation. Once that barrier is gone, ApoB particles can finally stick to the arterial wall like Velcro. Then oxidation starts, then immune cells arrive, then plaque forms. The LDL didn't cause the damage, it entered because the damage already existed. This is why lowering LDL doesn't reverse plaque, because it never fixes the reason LDL got in to begin with. A broken endothelial barrier, statins don't rebuild the glycocalyx, PCSK9 inhibitors don't rebuild it, Isentibi doesn't rebuild it, they change the lab result, not the biology. That's why people with LDL of 60 still get heart attacks, why vegans with perfect cholesterol still show plaque on a CAC scan. Why 50% of first-time heart attacks happen in people with normal cholesterol? Because the cholesterol number was never the real variable. The integrity of the glycocalyx was. If the glycocalyx is the real shield, then the real cause of heart disease isn't cholesterol. It's whatever is destroying that shield. Here's the real list, the one you never see in cardiology handouts. Check it out. One high carb meal can actually shrink the glycocalyx in under 60 minutes. Not in theory, and biopsy confirmed the human studies. You don't need diabetes, you don't need high A1C, all you need is repeated blood sugar spikes and the wall thins, then LDL becomes a threat. High stress does the same thing. Cortisol isn't just a hormone, it's a biochemical sandblaster. It raises glucose, increases inflammation, stiffens blood vessels, and strips nitric oxide. Doctors will treat your LDL for 20 years before they ask a single question about your stress load. Low nitric oxide is another killer. See, nitric oxide is the molecule that keeps the glycocalyx hydrated and alive. If you don't walk, don't lift, don't breathe through your nose, don't get sunlight, your arteries are starving for nitric oxide. A strong glycocalyx requires movement, not medication. So no, heart disease is not a genetic bad luck or cholesterol buildup, it's the cumulative erosion of a biological shield 
that modern life destroys faster than the body can rebuild. But here's the good news, the glycocalyx can rebuild. It's not permanent damage, it's a living organ. And if you give it the right conditions, it regrows in days, not decades. But you don't rebuild it with statins, you don't rebuild it by lowering LDL, you rebuild it by restoring the environment the artery expects. Stable glucose, stable stress, real nitric oxide, real minerals, real blood flow. Every study on glycocalyx regeneration points to the same four requirements. Low oxidative stress, consistent nitric oxide activation, sulfation rebuilding substrates, mechanical blood flow stimulus, movement. If those four are in place, the glycocalyx thickens, the charge returns, and ApoB particles go back to being harmless delivery trucks, not bullets. So the real fix for heart disease isn't lower cholesterol, it's restore the barrier so cholesterol has nowhere to stick. Once the wall is protected, the body stops treating LDL like a weapon and goes back to using it as fuel, hormone precursor, membrane material, and repair transport. So if we know what destroys the shield and we know what rebuilds it, then the real scandal is this. Almost nobody is being tested for glycocalyx damage. See, here's the wild part. We have tests that can measure endothelial function, meaning we can indirectly see whether the glycocalyx is intact or shredded. But 99% of cardiology never runs them. They'll measure LDL down to decimal places, but never check whether the artery can even protect itself. So why isn't it standard? Because the system is built on treating numbers, not restoring function. If they test endothelial integrity, half the prescriptions would make no sense. Because the problem wouldn't be high LDL, it would be damaged arterial lining, and that has no patent. No blockbuster drug, no insurance billing code. Here are the tools that do exist right now today. We have peripheral arterial tone, flow mediated dilation, short for FMD ultrasound, reactive hyperemia index, short for RHI, nitric oxide saliva strip response tracking, post-meal endothelial stress markers such as GGT, CRP, homocysteine, and fibrinogen. These measure the wall, not the cholesterol. And if these markers don't improve, ApoB will stay high no matter how strict your diet is. So now, the question becomes, if you can measure damage and you can rebuild the shield, what stops people from getting fully better? Why carnivore, keto, statins, fasting, supplements still fail some people? See, here's the real reason people stall. They remove the triggers, but they never rebuild the system. They stop eating carbs, seed oils, junk, which is good, but the endothelial lining still damaged, the glycocalyx still thin, nitric oxide still suppressed, electrolytes still low, sleep still wrecked, and stress still running the chemistry. Every person who fully reverses metabolic and cardiovascular damage ends up fixing three things, whether they know it or not. They repair the endothelial lining, not just lower LDL. They restore nitric oxide plus mitochondrial output. They control glucose, cortisol, and inflammation without relying on willpower. And that's why some people eat ribeye and get shredded and healthy, and others eat ribeye and stall. One removed the stressor, the other rebuilt the machinery. See, once the glycocalyx is rebuilt, the game changes. LDL stops sticking, ApoB drops without a fight, blood pressure normalizes, glucose flattens, you stop managing disease and start running biology. I already have the formula that rebuilds this barrier. It's real, it's clinical, and it's coming. Be patient with me, I'm finalizing it for release. If you want first access when it's ready, leave your email in the comments below.
In return, I'll send you the full exercise protocol for free. You'll understand how to move, breathe, and train to protect your glycocalyx before the formula ever drops. Before you go, hit, drop a comment and share this with someone who needs it.